All right, day one, part two, week four, ions. So hopefully at this time, you have a good understanding of isotopes and they don't affect chemical reactivity, which is what we are interested in a chemistry class. So what I'm gonna do right now is just run through ions. This is brief run through and introduction. This whole week we'll be working on ions and ionic bonds. So if you don't get everything right now, just be patient. You will have to be patient and thorough in your reading. Uh, this is a difficult concept, uh, but I know you can do it. So once again, a quick Google an ion. Now ion actually has a few more meanings in different contexts than isotope does. So here I clicked the filter for chemistry. And in chemistry, what we're referring to is a charged particle. That's all that is. An atom or molecule with a net electric charge. Why would it have an overall electric charge? Due to the loss or gain of one or more electrons. And the charge you have is proportional to how many electrons you lost or gained. If you lost one electron, that's a negatively charged particle, one less, therefore you are positive one. If you lost two electrons, you lost two negative charges. Therefore, you are now positive two because two negative charges left you. If you're an atom, such as those on the right side of the periodic table that tends to gain those electrons, well, if you gain one electron that's negatively charged, you become overall negatively charged. So an ion is simply a charged particle or molecule, an atom that's lost or gained. That's the only way, it's the only reason you would be uh, charged. And here's an example of that right here. So here's a sodium atom. Now, we're not concerned in this particular discussion about the nucleus, protons and neutrons. They're sodium, so they're gonna have the same proton number and so forth. So notice the energy levels. When you look at the period on the periodic table, you will count across, starting with hydrogen, one. And then the next one comes down, lithium, two. And the third one in that first group third period is sodium, right? First group, third period, that's sodium. So that third period means we're going to have one, two, three energy levels or three shells around our nucleus. Octet rule says the first one can hold up to two. The second one can hold up to eight. Now, again, if you look at sodium, you have to look at sodium on your periodic table. And that's number 11. So here we are two, and this can hold to eight more, and sure enough, it has eight to fill, so that's eight, nine, 10, and we need one more, 11. So just like the previous lecture I mentioned, hydrogen, lithium, sodium, potassium, all those have one electron in their outermost shell. That's called the valence shell. So one electron in the valence shell. And all atoms want to be stable, that is to have their outermost energy level filled in order to be satisfied or happy. So how's it gonna do that? Take on seven or release one? Yes, much easier. Give it away, just, just give it away. And when we give it away, it's lost, not to the open universe, but something else took it. So when that electron lose is lost, notice what happens to the sodium. That entire energy level is gone, right? And now this becomes our outermost energy level. And is it full? By golly, it is. Two, four, six, eight satisfies the octet rule. So sodium is stable and happy. Now, having lost that negative charge, now having still 11 positive charges in the center, we have eight plus two is 10. And now all of a sudden we have a positive one charge. This is a sodium ion. So this is the difference between a sodium atom and a sodium ion, okay? Whenever we're talking about the metals, the left side of the periodic table, the ones that tend to release or donate electrons, okay? Well, that's what I wanted to say. Left side of the periodic table, those are the ones that donate electrons very easily uh, to fall down one energy level, okay? And the atomic radius decreases. 
So what I want to do now is likewise draw again an example for you. There's many we could do. We want to keep it simple. There's two really common examples, um, sodium chloride or sodium fluoride. Um, one we use to flavor our food and the other we use to brush our teeth. Uh, both are pretty useful as a matter of fact. Um, so let's go ahead and go with sodium first. We know that. So we have, what do I to do that? Sorry. Sodium has 11 protons. And so with those 11 protons, we know it has two electrons in that first energy level, and it has eight electrons here. And we know naturally it has in that third one only one electron. This is in a group one. You're going to need to sometimes pause this to look at your periodic table. I should have warned you at the beginning. You can do that now if you haven't. But you'll notice that, again, sodium is atomic number 11. So it's in the third period, first group. And just as we've learned for groups and periods, we have our three rings, we have our one electron. Okay, let's get a different element, fluorine. Fluorine is a little smaller than chlorine, so it'll fit on here easier. So I'm gonna go with fluorine. Fluorine has nine protons. That's atomic number nine. Let's fill up our rings. So we have one ring with two electrons, that's the innermost, and I have nine minus two, seven. I need seven more. And yes, those will all fit right there, seven electrons. So my Bohr models are done. I have a fluorine and I have a sodium. Well, in the universe, you might see what could happen here very easily. Anytime you had a sodium and a fluorine together in the same place at the same time, you have a match made in heaven here. Hey, sodium, says fluorine. You got something I need. Oh, thank you, fluorine. I've been looking to get rid of this thing. And that's what's going to happen. It's just gonna go, whoops. This electron is going to fly over rather quickly. Ah, oh, come on, get my, over here. So that one electron, anyway, it's gonna come over here, the fluorine. And where is it gonna go? It's gonna go right there, added to that number seven, so we're going to be able to erase our seven now. And what's it going to become? Well, seven plus one is eight. Sorry about my eights. Eight electrons. Is fluorine happy now? Yep. Is it stable? Yep. That's all eight. Satisfies the octet rule. You look at sodium. Is he stable? Yep. Happy? Absolutely. So now we have this chemical reaction that has occurred. This is the most basic and probably some of the most common chemical reactions that occur in nature. From dirt and soil to sand and the ocean, water, uh, most things are made of, unless they're organic, living things, uh, they're made of ionic bonds. So how's this bond gonna occur? Well, first, this is now no longer a sodium uh, atom, it's a sodium ion. Why? Remember, we have 11 positive charges that defines it as sodium, but only 10 negative charges? Well, that means we're gonna have an excess of one positive proton, that's a sodium ion. Fluorine, on the other hand, has nine protons, and it gained an electron, right? So 10 electrons means it's gonna have an overall negative charge. So the way I'm writing this is how we denote ions. We put that positive or negative. Now in this case, it was easy, it's only a one. If it were two, we'd put the two right next to it, but it's not. So we have a sodium and a fluorine. When these two, when this reaction occurs, it's just like lightning and very quickly, we're going to form something called sodium fluoride. And notice the name change. The negative one always changes its name. It's no longer fluorine with an I-N-E. It becomes a fluoride. I-D-E. Same thing for chlorine. It becomes chloride. Oxygen becomes oxide. Okay, it gets that ide suffix. So this is now sodium 
fluoride, NaF. That's the final compound we'll form. Now we're gonna learn these things and we're gonna go step by step uh, over the next three days, okay? But I just wanna give you a quick introduction to what is an ion and an ion is simply a charged particle, okay? Anything that has uh, a charge on it. So where's hydrogen, hydrogen ion, all right? Oxygen, oxide or oxygen ion. That doesn't happen too often. Potassium, potassium ion, chlorine, chloride. Do you hear the difference? Whoops, this was a positive. The ides are negative. And you just keep the name and you say ion, potassium ion, hydrogen ion. Chlorine becomes chloride, oxygen becomes oxide. Okay, so that's an introduction to things we're gonna be doing and uh, hope that helps.